This man claims to be the most famous of them, more than just an anonymous footnote to history. His name is Nguyen Cao Ki. Ki held many positions in Vietnam over the years, Air Force Commander, Vice President, and Premier. He had a reputation for flamboyance, and although it was never proven, it's been said he used his position and contacts to amass considerable wealth. The caption to this 1968 editorial cartoon by Bill Malden reads, to you it's a war, to me it's a living. I didn't even take one penny when I was general, uh, Air Force commander, and when I was premier. One penny. If you can find anyone that give me one penny for a favor, I give you uh, my hand. You can think that I am a dumb politician, that I'm not a good fighter, but never, never say that I'm a corrupted. Today, he owns a liquor store in California. It is a small, family-run affair, and he says he is barely surviving. But Key's house nearby does not seem like the home of a poor man. He still travels widely and recently visited El Salvador. We asked Key about America's role in Central America and the inevitable comparisons to Vietnam. Are you saying, though, that the United States should either make a full-fledged commitment or not do anything? Yeah, I think better. Because like Vietnam, that's a lesson we learn. And uh, that's why now in El Salvador, I told all of them, uh, my opinion with my, and my own experience in Vietnam, I will not trust the government. I will not trust the official. I will not trust the politicians. While in El Salvador, he suggested there are thousands of Vietnamese refugees worldwide prepared to fight communists in Central America. You are a warrior of uh, certain repute. Yes. Why don't you go down there? Yeah, I already told them. I already offer my volunteer. If the day you need me, I will come and fight the communists. What was their reply? They said, thank you, but uh, right now they don't need, I think they, they think they can handle the problem themselves. As for the war in Vietnam, he ultimately blames the United States for the North Vietnamese victory. He says Washington called all the shots, even after the American troops pulled out. It's very sad that today that most of the people are trying to blame the loss of Vietnam on the Vietnamese and on people like me. Furthermore, Key condemns those Americans who once opposed the war and today do not address the current political and economic situation in Vietnam. Many people outside of Vietnam, people like Jane Fonda or Senator McGovern, you know, they listen to their propaganda. But I think what happened now, uh, after 80 years of occupation of South Vietnam, uh, they opened their eyes. But instead of uh, saying something about that, like uh, they did you know, in, during the war, well, they choose to keep their mouth shut. We first spoke with Nguyen Cao Ki in 1975 at his villa in Saigon on the very last day of the war. At that time, despite all odds, he vowed to remain in Vietnam. I'd like you to listen to a interview. Do you fear for your life? I just said no, never. Sometime you and I, we have to die sometime, some way, uh, some way. <laughs> you wouldn't use that helicopter that's sitting outside? To go where? To try to get away. No, I don't think so. Why is that helicopter sitting outside? It's always there. You did take that helicopter the last day? Mm-hmm. Uh, because at that time, at that moment, uh, I... I had hopes that uh, they will give me something uh, to fight the communists. Uh, you know, you, you can't fight by yourself with a cold 45. We have our, our own country, our own traditions that I think it was, are one of the best in the whole world. That's why it's very difficult for me, even after 80 years, to, to become really Americanized.